Well, do you want to start it off? Do you want to? Uh, you want sure. To first. Yep. So let me see. I have the first piece is by kindergarten graduation. The same. Freedom by. Rider Rain. Yes. Rain, Freedom Rider Rain. She always has the most intense pieces. And my goodness, she has been so sweet. She will text me and ask me how my dad's doing almost every day. And just Aww. sending me her love and prayers. She's been she's been a nice little rock on Insta. I love the photo. It like the photo that's with it is just so happy. Yep. Okay. It's called She's Just Crazy. Hello, is there anybody in there? Maybe just some lower genetic version of myself. I hear the knocking, but apparently it is only apparitions that dance upon the night air. They cling to my soul like trapeze artist to a swing. I've been tossed through grief like an Olympic gymnast, twists and turns cylindrical through hoops, so much so that I'm all too familiar with the routine. Cry, be strong. Your brother is falling apart. Give him your heart. As a matter of fact, give all of yourself till there is nothing left. Hypervigilant, yes. Hypertension, yes. Medication, check. I'm in increments and pieces, shards of jagged glass strewn across in a, a field of daisies. Mm -hmm. I struggle trying to gather the bits of myself with wounded and bloodied hands. I do anything to put myself back together again because I already know the routine. Scream, be strong, the world is falling apart. Give it your best till there's nothing left. Anxiety, yes. Manic, yes. Medication, check. Mm. Yep, she always, I mean, nice. every single piece that she ever has, it always just hits. I, 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 you feel it, you can understand it, every, every part. And, you know, I mean, I love the piece where, you know, the part where she talks about just being completely like broken, like in shards, you know, so often we feel that way and we're just be like, oh, just like sweep me, sweep me into a pile and let's see if I can just magically come back together. <laughs> I love the juxtaposition of the um, shards of jagged glass strewn across a field of daisies. Exactly. Yeah. It's so like soft and the hardness is. Yes. Good. exactly yep that was it that was it right there it's absolutely incredible and yeah. everyone everyone has felt that before absolutely so yeah, oh my goodness yeah those are some strong strong women so uh freedom rider rain and blood and guts andy so they live together oh, and cool. yeah and they um just come and uh i mean they're pieces that they share they share so much of themselves. I mean, this, this is, you want to talk about being a, you know, a poet on paper. This is them. I mean, they, they just, every, every part of them is out there and um, it's just absolutely amazing. And they are working on a collaboration book. And so they want to release a book together that has their pieces in it. And I'm just so excited for that. I think it's an amazing idea. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I'm excited. I'm so excited for it. That's and so um, cool. But yeah, they popped in on one of my lives once and totally surprised me. I wasn't expecting them to pop in and they were so sweet and they sent me so much love. And then even Andy, um, cause you know, Andy's, um, Andy's on oxygen. And, um, so, you know, they take care of each other and she even popped in and, and said hi. And it just, I mean, it really, they touched my heart. They're like, they're like my, my Instagram mamas. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah. They're, they're absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, all right. So I have one. And, um, so this is, a. I have to put my drink down so I don't spill it. Uh, this is a writer I have never read before. So Calyx underscore green is the, um, is the name. And so I don't know if male or female or whatnot. Um, I had a feeling, um, uh, it was female, but let me look. I don't know. They say Calyx, so. But I'm going to read this piece here. When you have lived with so much trauma, how do you know who you are? 
find yourself again, they say. But you never got to be you in the first place. So you try on different faces, wondering if, if this could be you, though each face is a little off, a little different than the faces around you. So you find a way to blend the faces that you liked the most, but there are imperfections. The seams were stitched with broken hands and sometimes the stitching unravels. So you try glue and others see it's not quite right and, and you feel it too. Do you isolate yourself because so many don't like the blended face that you wear, but you like this face? It incorporates the best that you've been in and what you hope to be and all these cracks and all the time that you've spent trying to be whole, it's overwhelming. Often you find yourself alone, looking in the mirror, trying to be okay with what you see. And I suppose this is the part where I tell you that, that you are perfect with all your imperfections and, and there will be people who will love you and there will be that one special person that will accept it all. And maybe the first two parts are true, but the last part, I don't actually believe that shit, but I'm dumb as fuck. So I'll keep looking and never quit. Hot damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kalex Green. I, yeah, I, I don't know why I wasn't familiar. Um, so she's an amazing writer. Okay, so Mia, you follow her, so it is a girl. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was male or female, but I was like perusing her page. Oh my God, like <sighs> phenomenal, that phenomenal. Incredible that um, the masking, it reminds me of something um, that like, I don't know, something like in, uh people who are autistic um mm -hmm. they mask um i don't know if this is relevant at all i'm completely losing my train of thought um but yeah masking with autism is like yeah yeah you know so yeah i reminded me of that and then also the um like the person that you never trying to look for the person you never got to be or something right it made me think about how like so many of adults in their like 20s and 30s are now like rediscovering like taking refuge in avatar the last year the under being on netflix and like mm -hmm. rediscovering all of these things from their childhood mm -hmm. that maybe they never really got a chance to like explore because so much of their childhoods were lost mm -hmm. and so like rediscovering the person you never got to be like yeah Rediscovered. Well, I knew that even for me, you know, that, you know, there's these certain times where, you know, even growing up, you know, I was, I felt like I was, I was trained. I was under, I was under the guise of what my, you know, of what my mom wanted to be or what her expectation was and her as a role model. And for me to come into my own as a woman and try and figure out who exactly that was, I mean, it was stifled for so long because of the fear and the insecurities and, you know, the depression and the anxiety. I mean, it all started very, very young for me. And, um, you know, it was just something that I, it was very hard to weed through. And so it was easy for me to put on a mask. It was very easy for me to become whatever I needed to be in certain scenarios, just because I simply wanted to please others. I didn't want the conflict. I didn't want, and, and I wasn't certain of myself. I was so insecure and I was so uncertain of myself and, um, you know, but, but that's a journey. And, and luckily I'm finally being able to say, mm, I'm ready. I'm ready to see who I am and who I want to be and kind of not worry about what other people think. And yeah. that's, that's hard. You know, it's, it's one of the scariest things to be like here world here, everyone around me, this is my true self. Do you like me or not? Yeah. And if they don't being okay with that, it's scary. That is also something I've been <laughs> on letting go of in therapy. Like there are so many different versions of myself that I present to different people, depending on who I'm with, like the, the church people, I give them a very very watered down version of me. This yeah. would not know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
the my therapist is like kind of like that piece that I wrote on um on belonging yeah like you hide aspects of yourself because you're afraid of being judged for yeah. who you really are and yeah you want to lose some of these people because the connection has just been so strong for so long mm-hmm. and like would you like me if you really like chances are I would lose so many people yeah I'm <laughs> sitting to read Blood and Guts Andy now oh right nice <laughs> awesome so here we go this is oh this is gonna hurt mm. <laughs> I'm ready this is called Honey by Blood and Guts Andy Llama's honey lived next door. He slid under cracks when he came to visit. Llama's honey made her swing and sway, and he closed the door to her playtime. But he still hid. He still slid under cracks when she wasn't looking. He two-timed Llama when she wasn't looking and slid on the floor, begging like an electric eel, hissing with his tongue searching, leaving his wet trail on cotton-frayed skin. And always when Llama wasn't looking, Mama's honey moved in to stay, and she gave him the keys and money to buy her things, and she thought she could keep him in her playpen and stop him from sliding under cracks when she wasn't looking. But Mama's honey hated her time and shoved his keys in her eyes, which didn't really matter when she wasn't looking, and he slid under cracks, calling and searching for the cotton frayed skin, the white cotton skin. And he tore it open with his hissing tongue and slid into a new crack just discovered. And Mama's honey poured his hot, sticky blood into the cotton cracks, the big new skin, until it ran through the fibers like watercolors. And there was no more white. And then he wriggled away into a sweet, sticky sleep to the rest where the next day's sliding and all when Mama wasn't looking. Mama didn't look a lot. Mm. Mama didn't look a lot. Oh my goodness. Oh. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. That one's tough. That one's really, really tough. Wow. You know, um, so hard when, you know, those grow up with with trauma or instances and you know you you look to your parents for that for that protection and uh to not have that protection when you know it's just you know that in itself is trauma on top of the trauma that you know one is i can't even imagine one would already have received i mean uh, her words are just so 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 hard i mean but again so so thankful that she's that she's there that she's sharing her words and um you know that she's pouring her heart out for us you know yeah i love that this is out there as difficult as it was to read it makes me really happy in the weirdest way to see that these things are able to be yeah expressed um like the whole purpose of creating so that it's like you relieve that pressure. Yeah. And you help other people see right what happens. Yeah. Absolutely. Like the peace on the go. So I think powerful. This is make you uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Like if you have a piece where you are like someone's like, oof, you know, then you know you're you're doing what you need to do. You're you're ma- you're saying something, and you're making people open their eyes, whether or not it makes you uncomfortable, or whether or not it makes you go oof because it hurts you on an emotional level. Then that means that you needed to share those words. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. So I love those girls. I love those ladies. I love them. I love them. I love them. All right, so now I have, let's see, who am I going to read? I'm going to read, um, I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm going to read you. 
because yes, I, you had a piece that you posted and I love, and I love this piece because it's about you, you just were so vulnerable and talking about how, you know, you're learning to, to accept and, you know, and, and move on and heal. And I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And I, for today, I wanted to share your words. <laughs> so I want to read you. <laughs> so I'm going to do it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so this everyone is Z. This is writing poems in the dark. All right, and I'm gonna read your captions too because I think that that's important uh, before, okay. I, before I read your piece. And it says, today's therapy session was one of the most healing ones that I've had. The idea of belonging anywhere is something that I struggle with, but I think I'm finally content with the idea that I belong to myself. This piece is rough and was written on the adrenaline of a breakthrough. So everyone be kind to yourself and stay safe. And here you are and you are doing three days of mental health awareness. And I think that's phenomenal and amazing. And I am just so honored to be able to be here with you and do this. And so I am going to share your words. Thank you. On belonging, you asked me, what would you be compromising if you were to belong? And when I said everything, he smiled and waited. We found the source of the raging storm that picks up speed inside of me every time I hear someone address me by my given name. You cannot force belonging upon anyone. Good as your intentions may be, belonging is a choice. When I picked Z, I chose to belong to myself. A name is simply an identifier. What you do with it is what it becomes. A name becomes you. I could make my given name badass and powerful as fuck, but it will still get hurt. When I picked a Z, I chose to make the anon anonymity enigmatic. I exist in the between, between deaf and hearing, between disabled and able-bodied, between Asian and American, between birth families, adopted families, and chosen families, between queer and straight, between male and female, fuck your gender binary between religious and spiritual, between the past versions of myself and who I am becoming. Passing is not a compliment. It means I've been living one-sided for so long that I've managed to fool you into thinking that I am one of you and you'll treat me as such, while the other half of me screams, traitor. If I am one, I am not the other. I cannot be one without the other. Passing is not a fucking compliment. If I am not a walking contradiction, honey, I don't know what it is, but I know who I am. And when I die, I'm not going to heaven, but I'm sure as fuck I'm not going to hell either. And when I die, I'm going to be reincarnated as a raven and fly until I find the willow tree planted from the seed of eternal hope watered with mother nature's tears of rage, nurtured by the holy sun and sprinkled with La Luna's moon dust and make my home there. Belonging is a choice and I am not willing to sacrifice my sense of identity and everything I am for a sense of belonging, at least not here. Oh my God, you read that so well, thank you. I couldn't have read it without oh. your words. And that Z is absolutely incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it actually made me like a little, like a little emotional. I just, um, God, I just, I felt every, every single part of it. And I, I just, it was beautiful Z. It absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad that, that you shared that, that you wrote that. Thank you. Amazing. 
Yeah, therapy has been really helpful for me. It's made me realize that a, a lot of things and like unlearning toxic behaviors. Uh, that problem, oh my God. So my name is something that I've struggled with my entire life. Yeah. My parents made up the name. The actual name that it, that it is, I won't ever share. Okay. Uh, but let's just say that it was, because it was made up, no one could pronounce it growing up. Okay. Um, I always got variations of it because people would try to be like, well, like, something close to this, sure. And mm -hmm. with my speech impediment, they like were like, oh, this is really terrible. And it wasn't until like middle school and my PE teacher, bless his heart, he was dyslexic and he couldn't say my name. So he just started calling me Z and it kind of just stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then like the security guard called me Z and like other teachers would just call me Z and mm -hmm. I realized that, oh yeah, I like that because it is very anonymous and there's no affiliation with my past or mm -hmm. anything that's trying to make me into something that I'm not. Yeah. And so I actually have very, very many names. I have a lot of names. I have my Korean name, my mm -hmm. good name. Um, the name that my parents gave me, which combined my sister's and my Korean names, mm. Dane's name, that's a lot of names. Yeah. I've always, so in like my freshman year of college, I think it was, I had to do a paper on Joy Luck Club. Yeah. As so many people have to do. <laughs> and my English teacher was like, okay, well, I know you, you're a good writer, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> That's nice. I was like, all right, you're smart, you're intelligent, and you write amazing, do whatever you want with it, because I just look forward to reading it. It's basically what they were saying. Pretty much. <laughs> and so she was like, so you can do whatever you want. And I was like, okay, great. I'm going to break down the some symbolism behind the names used in this book. And um, I drew a lot of that, the whole, like, the name that you're given um, in Asian culture, like your Asian name versus your Americanized name, and sort of like, what does that actually mean in terms of identity? Mm -hmm. Are you giving up part of your identity for when you take your American name? Or are you giving up your American identity when you use your Asian name? Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of sort of like that going on. Yeah. So yeah, names, man, I could go on forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. marker. Yeah. I was very, very specific with, um, you know, with picking out my kids' names, you know. Um, you know, I just, my name, my name's Robin, you know, there's nothing like too, you know, too many variations. I mean, I'm sure already, you know, you automatically think of just the little things that people will, uh, you know, will comment on, you know, Batman and Robin or Robin Hood or, you know, all those, all those different things. But I was still very, very specific in wanting to pick my children's names. I, I wanted it to be powerful. I wanted it to be strong, you know, and I wanted it to be, um, you know, something that they, you know, that they could be proud of. Unfortunately, they're just now getting proud of them now because <laughs> they are names that are like so off the top. Everyone mm -hmm. always says they're so beautiful, but the pronunciation, everyone pronounces them wrong or spells them wrong or whatnot. But, you know, uh, the power in a name. I mean, it's so, it's so crazy, you know, yeah. but, um, but yeah, so, all right. Well, now that I got to review, <laughs> It is now your turn. Read one more for me. So while I look, I always like my siblings as like seven nieces and nephews, and whenever like another one of them was like, I'm having another kid, I was like, Oh, are you? <laughs> it came again. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, I'm never gonna have kids, but if you wanna name my plants, like that's <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's like, name your plants. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, my niece named a couple of them. She, could, she asked me if she could like video chat to feed my plant. Really? Oh, that is so cute. I kind of like, like, she's like three. It was so sweet. I was like, oh my gosh, you remembered. 
Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I talk about. Um, and so she's like, yeah, I want to see your clients. And then are there any that need your name still? And I'm like, actually, yes. <laughs> and so she named them like piece three. And yeah. so it was like Liz, <laughs> Arf, like Arf, Arf, Arf. Like, yeah. Yeah. So weird. And uh, Watham. Oh, how funny. Or something like that. So, yeah, it really. Sweet. Those are the best names. I mean, those are those are brilliant. Those are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> when my when my daughter um, when she was about like four years old, I remember she came running out and she was so excited and she's just like, "I have the best name." And I'm like, "What is it, honey?" And she's like, "Well, when I have kids, I'm gonna name my daughter Bacteria." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, are you?" And she's like, "I think it's beautiful." <laughs> Because there is no, you know, no connection as that it's something really horrible and disgusting. But anyway, it's a fun little story. But yeah, so that's cute that she names your plants. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have, oh, this is colorful anomaly. Um, the caption says, this piece answers trumped by anti-poetic revolution that escalated quickly. Okay, give me a heads up for what I'm reading. <laughs> Which is a pretty open ended prompt to touch on how 2020 is going for you or what it should be current with you. Um, this is also my response to the prompt and contest um, to write a piece about how to scale or escape the walls of your prison. This is going to be really cool. So I don't think there is, oh wait, no, the title is Prison Break. Hmm. Fashion me from bones. The skin prison never felt like home. I wear my sins on my hips as I lick the crumbs of apocalypse from my liar's lips. How many calories in a pipe song? How many nuts per hour in a protest song? I try to chant that anthem of self-acceptance but instead choke on the hypocrisy hardened and lodged in my throat. Locking me and stalking me like wayward weeds in my way back garden. Greedy and overgrown, no matter how much I sharpen a blade to hack them back into shape and flash them to bits with a twist of my wrist and a flick of a bick. My hair is on fire and my roots are showing and I just want to go home. Incarcerate my vestigial heart. Contain my rage behind these ribcage bars that hope floats in a moat of morning coffee until I'm strung out on caffeine and fentanine, an unsung hero in a not quite sized bureau, coughing up a kamikaze of self-hate and nicotine spray on the kitchen counter of every counter attack in this uncivil war. And I flounder like the little mermaid waiting in a pool of bile on the tile floor, waiting for nitrants to come baptized me in a sea of toxic masculinity to be both my father and son because I'm the unholy ghost in this noxious smoke and mirrors trinity. I'm not this in the cigarette mood to dispute my divinity and my ashes are strewn across the false altar of femininity. Try for me my war crimes, try to enter me in the mausoleum of trauma and time. I roam the catacombs of my chromosome until I've dissected every cell that creates the flesh walls of this prison and, chain me, and chains me to the gates of space dementia hell. But where does hell come from? It's all a social construct built from blood, glut, and guts. My universe keeps shrinking as these anorectic thoughts expand. I'm expect ex Expatriates in an alien nation exiled from the land. And I'll feast on the hand that feeds and holds me forever in remand. Barbed wire hunger encumbered to the numbers, the delusions that demand a human offering. Home lingers like the smoke on my fingers, and these weeds still need watering. See now that, like, the one thing that I've heard the most about people who have eating disorders in this pandemic 
it's been so fucking hard mm-hmm. um because you're at home now and like you can't like it's just there it's so easy to get caught back in that yes i've been struggling my friends have been struggling and yeah it's, it's a lot it's really hard because you just don't have access to the resources yeah um also like eating can be like a really social thing and like it holds you accountable mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's different really when awkward. you're when you're by yourself and you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah and so yeah. it's really awkward to just call someone and be like, "Hey, can I eat with you?" And like, I've been doing that, but it's still so awkward. Like, uh, we yeah. should go to the park or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hold myself accountable. So, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I know there's been so many things. Like even even for me. Um, you know, and I, I, I know it sounds maybe silly for some people, but like getting up, leaving and going to the gym is, is huge for me because I'm making myself leave the house and then I'm going and I'm doing something for me. And it is mm-hmm. hard. It's hard for me to do things for myself, <laughs> find time for me. And that was one thing that I always did. And even though, you know, I have my the elliptical and I can work out at home, it's just not the same. And I do not force myself to do it. And it really affects, it affects my mentality. It affects my mood. And, um, and so then I start to feel like I'm not doing something for myself, but it's even, you know, it's just that image, that image of what you have and, and being held accountable. And that made me actually be held accountable for myself because I would, make myself leave the house, go and do this where I knew it was going to be good for my soul and spirit. And I don't have that. So I don't feel like I hold myself quite as accountable. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Like, Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say something and then I lost my train of thought. There it is. (laughs) Well, it's my turn, right? My turn to read. So I have, I am going to read Amy, which is words that want out. And I got to do that amazing live with her um, where she shared, um, you know, her experience with, um, you know, when she was abducted in Cape Town, Africa and and that she escaped. And I mean, just that entire live was just so powerful. It was incredible. Oh, Oh my gosh. I mean, her story, I, I was just sitting there, like, I was just, like, in awe. I'm like, I mean, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then for her to learn after she had escaped that, um, you know, that those men had done it prior to two two girls before. And those those girls did not survive. I mean, to learn of that, I mean, it's just, I I can't even imagine, you know, I can't even imagine. But hers, yeah, it was a powerful, powerful lie. But this is, I'm going to read her. And... All right. So so this is a collaboration piece of hers, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. And so I'm going to share it. So it's for words that want out. And she collabed with Stephanie.Briar.Poetry. So it's the two of them together, just so that everyone knows that not just Amy, but she had someone with her. Why do I break everything except glass ceilings? I'm always looking upwards, trailing blood crushed into dust, shattering everything behind me. And all I have to do is stand, but I just keep falling and blessing the ground again when every dream ends. But I was meant for more than this. I always thought I would move mountains, but when I had back, and when I look back at the trajectory of my life, there is only one word repeated survive 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 and all i know is fight or flight but i think the time has come to fly and i want to i long to but how can i when i'm lost in my own mind i'm fighting demons that won't play nice Why am I so loud about empowering the world? But when it comes to me, I dissolve through walls like a haunted ghost retreating to my mental tomb so I can be alone in a crowded room. Ashes to ashes and dawn to dusk, my best laid plans all bite the dust, but I'm stopping short 
of giving up because one day I will be enough, not for them, but for me, because that kind of love is everything. And I'm starting to believe in new beginnings and I hope you are still waiting, that you still believe in the best of me. I liked that. I, I like the fact there was the acknowledgement of, you know, our brokenness and our pain, but at the same time, the fact that we can heal and we can grow and like, don't give up, don't give up on me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, don't give up on me. I know sometimes you may not think I'm trying. It may not look like I'm trying, but internally I'm trying. <laughs> so don't give up. Don't go anywhere. I'm trying, I'm here and it's hard and I'm broken, but I'm going to survive, and I want you to see the best of me. I love that part where it's like fight or flight, you know, time for me to fly. Yes. Such a beautiful moment there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's so, and it's so true, you know. Um, you know, we all deal with, with these, you know, self-deprecating thoughts and views of ourselves. And, you know, we say it time and time again that we are our own worst critic every time, you know, mm -hmm. we're the ones that break ourselves down probably more than anyone else. You right. know, it may have been a situation that instigated it, but unfortunately we started to train ourselves to believe it and to retrain our minds, to retrain our brain is such, such a hard task. So difficult, but yet we're trying. Yeah. We're trying. I think it is so empowering to take that back. Mm -hmm. um, the loss of autonomy and doing yeah. everything you can to reclaim yourself and mm -hmm. your existence and your spaces is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Who do you have? Who do you have to read now? <laughs> Apparently, I have a lot of messages I gotta read. <laughs> Kill the day. <laughs> I am never this popular. Like, who is it? I know it's probably all Andy and I. We're probably like, Z, can you boot him? <laughs> can you <laughs> boot him? Boot him out, Z. <laughs> that and other people telling me to get my butt in Animal Crossing. <laughs> Seriously. They want you to be online. They're like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's play. Busy. You're going to fish and get your fruit some other time. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, like, uh, it was like my graduation present from my parents are like, mm -hmm. Animal like, Crossing and Nintendo Switch. I'm like, oh, you have no idea what you just did. <laughs> it goes my entire life from now on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have... Um, words for the broken. Yes, James. Okay. No title. Okay. My world has come to a complete stop. Sand in the hourglass has ceased to fall. I impatiently await for the next grain to drop. I'm tempted to smash it, just end this all. I've done absolutely nothing with my life, spent days locked in a cycle of self hatred. I've towered in the shadows, afraid of the light. I exist in a nightmare of my own creation. I stripped my soul bare, just left it for dead. I tore my heart to shreds to, to no longer feel. I wear fake smiles, I do my best to pretend. I won't let anyone discover they're never real. I'm frozen in a hell I haven't tried to escape. There's a decaying corpse lying at my feet. Tears may blur my vision, but I know his face. He's a dead remnant of whom I aspired to be. I love James's pieces. Things that he always, I mean, he doesn't post, you know, a lot very often, or at least maybe not that I, that I notice or realize, but every single time every single time I'm just like, it's so relatable. Like I feel that, 
-hmm. You know, even where, where, you know, I've done absolutely nothing with my life, spent days locked in a cycle of self-hatred. I feel that, oh my goodness. <laughs> Been there, feel that, uh. <laughs> I mean, it's just that uh, sometimes that endless cycle, it's just, you know, you get yourself in it. And so that hamster wheel of negativity, and it's so hard to break free from it. Yeah. It's hard sometimes to break free from it. As I was reading it, I was visualizing sort of like a dark sort of cave. Mm -hmm. um, and like just like darkness because that like it's so vivid yeah it, yeah it was really cool but so vivid yeah like i think we all sort of we've all been there right like yep absolutely yeah. lots of times so funny they were like oh wow you're so like depressing for a 21 year old i'm like i know it's great <laughs> 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 oh, yes, absolutely. This is me. Uh -huh. oh, and Rain, uh, Z's um, Instagram name is Writing Poems in the Dark. Oh, thank you, Brett. <laughs> He's like, I'll just put it out there for you guys. In the dark, not after dark. Oh, sorry. I said in the dark. Oh. No. Um, oh, it is in the dark. I'm all, I said in the dark. <laughs> He's put in after dark. So it's writing poems in the dark. <laughs> it's a literal thing, like, goes back to when I was in middle school, I think. Um, I went through a really rough time and there was a time when I couldn't like have anything in my room at night and I would always sneak pens and papers and write literally by the moonlight and there was also my next door neighbors, they had a night shift mm -hmm. and would always sort of, they would come home around 2 a.m. Mm. Um, <laughs> Um, I just thought it was kind of funny. Cause... So you would have like a little, little flicker of yeah, light. Yeah, every time I throw in, I was like, okay, got like five minutes to write. Yeah. So it was like literally writing in the dark. Yeah, writing in the dark, literally. That's awesome. I like I like the little history of your name. I like that. Yeah. It's also so, really cool. how many more, how many pieces do you have left? Do you have one? Um, like... That's it for today, I think, because. Okay. We also have tomorrow. Right, right. So do you have you, you have one or none? None. None. Okay. So let's see. I well then I'll read mine. Yeah. Oh, wait, did we read false poetry? Did we read that one? Who? False poetry. But you want to save that one for tomorrow, I think, right? False poetry, hold on. There's a repost that you sent me. That was actually Okay. Hold on, let me check. I don't know. There it is. Okay. Sleep? Yeah, it was a repost, I think. Oh, yeah, that was Colorful Anomaly. Okay. They posted there. Gotcha. All right. All right. So the one that I have left then, for all of you people still hanging out, I will read mine. <laughs> and then we will let you guys, we'll let you guys go after that. And then um, I will go and eat some, eat some barbecue. <laughs> So yeah, so this is basically um, anytime I feel like that negativity coming in and I can just feel like the agitation. It's almost like I like can literally feel it. I can feel it like affecting like certain parts of me. I can feel the agitation. And I just want to get rid of it. If I could scrape it off my skin or if I could just vomit it out, it's just like I would just want it gone. And so, um, so this is what I wrote in basically a description of that. <laughs> So this is called um, The Daily Dose of Dickens' Deceit. Sift through filth and dead skin lodged underneath blackened fingernails of desperation. For they had adhered to the surface and braced position as cuticles peeled and frayed with splintered bones. The ledge was now so narrow and fragile. These hands clasped Tendons constrained in pallor with an entanglement of blue, pulsating and pressing against taut skin. Screaming for seams to be ripped open. My callous palms pressed firm, beseeching gods as knees scrape in prayerful pose. Ears screaming 
within the calamity, blood dripping from deep canals of chaotic confusion. And in a swift moment of respite, delicate digits claw at lobes in search of the iron-filled fluid. Eyes hypnotized, bewitched by bare-skinned pads of appendages, void of any and all trappings or paraphernalia. Tongue extended in a manner of dubiety, viciously lapping secretion of obvious squalor, and now with the taste of salt calcified upon reddened cheeks, with lashes fused together from expulsion of lamented sorrows. Lips cracked, oozing vernacular and desperate attempts to soothe, spitting its salve onto festered wounds, stinging, burning as the infection grows. Soul feeling the pull of deception's artifice and belly, rotten, vile, seeps to the surface, its putrid redolence steaming as it swallows the daily dose proffered from methocephalian hand and then came his soured stratagem scent wafting nostrils flared esophagus inflamed and mordancy cultivating faith wavering caustic belief nibbled at the core with barely a crumb left for even a glimmer of a propitious omen core and longing to purge i stand in readying stasis to rid my being of such vile atrocities cemented unbudging i am still liminal within the cost Holy fuck. that's me <laughs> that was incredible thank you <laughs> wow oh. here we go just get it all out you just purge it all out and let it go <laughs> so good though oh. that must have been so cathartic to write too yeah, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to get like that, like all of that out there, like just to feel it, mm, how you just want to just reach down. Like sometimes I imagine just reaching down and just wanting to pull it out and just like throw it yeah. away. And so I guess that's as good as I get is on my words, my therapy words. <laughs> therapy words are good words. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Well... Thank you for this, C. Thank you for having me and that, me being here and us doing this together and enduring and being able, like, we got to share.